Hello there, uh, Alex Downham here, and today I actually just wanted to do a quick video showing a technique on how you can use Substance Painter uh, to basically add in extra details to your normal map after you've baked a, um, a normal map to your mesh. And I saw this technique briefly in one of uh, the videos released. Um, by one of th someone else who said how he used Substance Painter to add in the extra detail maps and then subsequently pull that into Substance Designer. However, today I'm going to show you like the exact setup and how to import that into uh, Substance Painter in more detail. So you've got Substance Painter open by default. The first thing you want to do is create a new document. So we're going to File, New, and we're just going to discard the default scene and you'll see here you get a new project window pop up so the first thing you want to do is select the mesh you're working on so for me I've just got a uh, sort of sci-fi lighting unit I'm working on as my mesh and you want to pull in the any normal map you've baked from a high poly or something you've started off with as your base so I basically had a high poly model and I bait the high poly to the low poly to generate a uh, based normal map which just sort of has all the hard edges and information I need to make the low poly look more detailed. And we just set this uh, to default and you may want to play around with this if the uh, green channel is inverted. I think uh, X normal works with direct X so we'll say OK to that and there's our mesh with the normal map applied and so this is our th the 3D view here if you're familiar with Substance Painter's latest release and we've also got the 2D view which I'll discuss how that's quite handy later on. Um, one thing I like to do is just turn off the background so I can see the, the mesh slightly better. And so basically what we're going to be doing is importing some alpha masks or uh, textures brushes type uh, sort of thing and using them to paint in some extra details onto our normal map here. So uh, the first thing you'll want to do is import these and how you go about doing that is quite straightforward. You go up to file and you just want to select import image and then you browse to wherever you keep your brushes or alpha textures and uh, you can find some of these online so for example these ones here are actually from ZBrush's online library I used a couple of them and I've created a couple of my own as well so we'll just pull those in and then they are kept in this textures tab in the shelf or also in your brushes uh, tab as well um, one tip about creating your own um, brushes is I've just used a 512 by 512 document um, you want to make sure black is your background as that's, that's the alpha transparency in Substance Painter and then the white is any sort of shape or design you want and so I've sort of just done random shapes to use or you can go in more detailed ones like these or just some basic shapes to add some interesting uh, variation to your normal map adding extra detail so the next thing what to do is to just adjust the setup of the uh, the painting. So under our layers uh, window here, we can we want to change it to height. As what we'll be doing is painting uh, basically painting black and white height information, and then this height information will then get converted to uh, normal map information once we export the map. Um, so we change that to height. Uh, the next thing we want to do is select the brush. I use artistic one as the preset because it's just a mask and then a diffuse color and then we're going to select bump because we're going to be pump, uh, painting uh, bump information or height information so that gives us a nice easy setup to work with here so if you're familiar, somewhat familiar with Substance Painter um, you might already know these but I'll quickly go over them so we've got size of the brush here uh, flow, we can also change the spacing between if, if you're going to paint it one continuous line but in our case we basically just want to be clicking and then adding uh, the shape where it is so the best settings for this is to turn off any of the jitter 
here because we just want to click and then apply any of these uh, masks we have here. Um, so I'll just quickly show you how that's done. So once you've got this set up, you want to drag one of these alpha masks onto uh, this slot here. So for example, I'll drag this uh, mask here and see that loads in. And now if I click somewhere on the mesh, that applies that shape. And you can start to detail your model. Now there's a few other settings you want to know about that's quite useful, is these alignment settings. I'll quickly go over how those work. So by default, tangent, basically, wherever you click, it will basically form to the contours of your object, I believe. That's uh, as far as I'm aware. So that will follow, so I think, follows the tangents of the mesh, I'm pretty sure. Or perhaps the tangents of the format, I'm not sure. But something like that. Camera will base it on the camera position. So as you can see this gets really stretched because it's basically forcing the perspective of where, wherever the camera is. However this is quite useful if you lock it say to an orth the most orthographic view as you can get and then click and you can get quite a nice um, flat alignment there. I must admit that would be one nice feature to add is a orthographic or perspective view option. It's just one thing to suggest. Um, the next alignment uh, mode is UVs and this one's really really useful if you're working in a 2D view uh, because this will actually confine any painting you do to each shell so as you can see it will correct for seams but it will not paint in the uh, empty space between UV shells which is really nice and <coughs> I found the UV alignment is particularly useful when you're painting in the 2D view here and you pretty much do the exact same thing as you're doing in the 3D view and the 2D view. Uh, I've actually preferred to paint in the 2D views because um, I can see where my UVs are and where each shape should uh, end up being. Uh, now the size alignment is basically uh, varies depending on uh, this option, uh, what you choose. So for example viewport will actually, uh, when you zoom in, the size of a brush will be based on how far away you are from the object. So this is going to give you a bigger uh, mask because it's further away. Because you can see that much of the mask uh, covers the object. Whereas if you zoom in, you're going to get smaller details, and that's quite useful if you're zooming in and out and you just want this sort of uh, variable, consistent offset. I don't know, something like that. I hope that makes sense. And texture, I'm not too sure what that does. I think this base maybe bases it on the size of the UVs. So it's consistent. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it does. So depending on the size of your UVs, it'll actually correct for. Because um, this obviously, this UV shell is bigger than this one. And if you change the size, so if I change this to object and we paint that on there, that's going to be, even though I haven't changed the size, because uh, this is bigger, the resolution uh, differs between the two. So actually, I've just worked that texture is actually very useful when you're painting between two UV uh, seams that are at different sizes. That will keep the mask at the same size. So that's actually very useful. Um, particularly, say, for example, you're painting between these two uh, meshes here. Let's just change that to tangent. That will correct for the difference in uh, UV shell sizes. Now you can paint across two separate meshes. So that's the um, alignment and size space options. They're particularly useful when you're uh, working with this workflow or method. Now the last thing I want to quickly cover is this slider down here and basically this allows you to choose the height depth of um, when you paint so you've got zero which is just sort of the, the middle ground no height whatsoever once I paint nothing shows up or we can go to negative space and this will actually uh, indent into our normals or we can go up to one which will give us the emboss 
effect. Like so. So, um, that's basically how you go about setting that up and then you're pretty much ready to start painting. So you can go in and just start adding in some uh, various shapes. Uh, you might want to add some detail in here. Like so. Um, one thing that is currently not too great is the alignment. You kind of have to eyeball it. That would be one nice feature to add in a future release where perhaps say you want to draw a straight line be nice you could hold the uh, shift or something and draw across because right now it just it's a bit of a mess it's hard to align things or maybe some sort of ruler system that would be quite useful uh, but at the moment you just kind of have to eyeball where you place these things uh, maybe we'll add this somewhere I don't know. looks pretty good and maybe we want some bolts. Let's just pull that down. A bit too big. I don't know. Anyway, so you can start adding some details to your models. Um, and so once you're happy with that, you can also change the height for. So we can actually if you think that your our mask we've been painting in the layer one is too strong you can adjust the force of this so you can lower it uh, but I found I found to leave it at one to be fine and then once you're happy with that you're then going to go up to export all channels and we're only because we're only painting normal information we want to just deselect the rest and select the normal and you can see it will generate <coughs> excuse me base normal plus the height map we've been painting in layer one and then we can select the document size of our uh, exported map and then I'll just quickly show you how I've used this so start off with I had the baked normal map with no added information just looked at getting you know the hard surface smooth corners and then I poured it into Substance Painter, added in the extra details, and there you go. As you can see, it looks much more interesting. Didn't take much time at all, and uh, it's quite easy to do. Just added in some interesting shapes. There's a bit of poor alignment there, but it's all due to having to eyeball where things are. So I hope that's given a good insight on or some information on how you can use Substance Painter to paint in extra normal d information and uh, that's all I wish to share today, thank you.